It is a huge honor today to be interviewing a, a uh, just a little young stud, a little 28-year-old John Serbu who's just hit the ground running. I mean, I, uh, you're uh, my oldest boy's uh, same age as you, so I feel like you're my uh, oldest son, same age as Eric. Um, your your, your uh, bio, John Serbu is a dentist, author, and illustrator. During dental school at the University of Iowa, he started a Facebook page called Dental Art and Humor, where he posts his own drawings as well as other entertaining and interesting dental media. He has also authored several books, including The Complete Pre-Dental Guide to Modern Dentistry and his latest work, Practical Social Dentistry, uh, Social Media for Dentistry, which I have right here. And um, and then visit his website, John Serbu, uh, J-O-H-N John. Serbu is S-Y-R-B-U.com or his Facebook page, uh, facebook.com forward slash John Serbu. Uh, for more information, but you also, um, on your bio, um, you also have a children's book, which I thought was, was pretty uh, darn cool. You, uh, Dental Art and Humor, is intended for dentists, dental personnel, and anyone who has a profound interest in both dentistry and creative humor. And then the children's book, Tommy the Tooth, Tommy's New Friend. Man, you're just really creative. You're, are you more artist than dentist? Uh, yeah, definitely. I'm, I'm a little more right brain. A little more right brain. So what type mm -hmm. of dentistry do you like? I'm just curious. You're so artistic. What type of dentistry? Well, right now I, I really enjoy everything just because I'm so new at it. So everything's still, you know, new, fresh, and interesting. But uh, yeah. yeah, yeah. I mean, I really like endo. I really like pulling teeth. I really like cosmetics too. And I just enjoy it all right now. Well, that's awesome. So um, what do you, what do you want, um, want to talk about today? Now, you're born in Moldova, a little – kidney bean country between um, Romania and Ukraine, where your mom's bro brother is a dentist, still practicing there, right? Yep, yep, absolutely. He's got a, a little, it's it's kind of interesting over there, private practice, uh, you're either in private practice or in the public sector, and he's actually in what's called a polyclinic there, where he has a room, and it's just a one chair, he works with his wife, wife and just kind of sees uh, patients as they come in. But he's also building his own private practice now to transition into his own building and so forth. You know, the majority of the world's two million dentists are all a one operatory, one dentist, one employee model. I mean, I, I just got back from uh, four countries, um, 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 Medan, Indonesia, Singapore, Malaysia, and Japan. Japan's kind of like the United States. You know, they all got three or four ops, but uh, Malaysia, Indonesia, Singapore, everybody just has one operatory. If you go into a dental office, there's two operatories, there's two dentists there. So, uh, yeah. and, and it's a very lean and mean model. I mean, you know, they, 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 a lot of these dentists, uh, they, they make about the same as an American dentist. You know, they might make 150, but they'll, they'll gross 300 and take home half of it. Mm -hmm. uh, whereas in America, most of the dentists that uh, take home 150 might gross, you know, six, 700 because they got that big expanded function model that uh, is kind of a, 1970s hangover model from when um, uh, you would just um, take your costs, add a profit, submit your fees to the dental insurance company, <clears throat> and then they would pay a percentage of that. And then 40 years later, now um, it's not cost plus profit equals your fee. It's the insurance company's telling you your fee, and, uh, and then you got to work backward from that fee minus your profit equals a budget. And the dentists really haven't switched from I'm just going to buy anything, add profit, and submit a fee to where you got to get a fee, subtract your profit, and arrive at a budget. I, I, don't, I don't see any dentist who are sitting around thinking about, well, what cost am I going to cut? You know, how am I going to downsize? And they're still buying every shiny new toy. They're still buying every, you know, they want to buy a CBCT instead of having access to one. They want to buy a CAD CAM for 150 instead of taking an $18 impression uh, and letting the lab do the CAD CAM. They, uh, uh, it's kind of different, but but let's get back to you. Um, so what is it like? Uh, you just graduated in 2013. What is life like as a new dentist? Uh, it's great. And then actually after graduation, I did a GPR at the Minneapolis VA uh, here in Minnesota. And so that was a really inter interesting thing to do afterwards. I would, I would definitely recommend it for anyone who's thinking about it and thinks they might be interested in it. But at the same time, it's not for everyone. And my philosophy on it is that you can't make a wrong choice no matter what you do. If you're going to go straight into practice, you're going to be glad you did that. If you did a GPR, you're going to be glad you did that too, just like me. So there's no wrong way to do it. Now, is, now are you married? Yes. And your wife is a dentist, isn't she? Correct. Okay. Yeah. So so do you practice with your wife or what's, what's that like? 
No, no. We uh, we met on the first day of dental school. It's a classic love story. That's and, just uh, awesome. And then we were actually co-residents too. Right after she was two of, we were two of the four residents there. And uh, and then after since then we just kind of got jobs in in neighboring uh, towns down here, and we practice separately now. That is just awesome. I tell every guy in dental school, the smartest miss move you can ever make is marry one of them girls in the class because they'll make ten grand a month. Whereas you marry the girl at the Waffle House, she'll spend ten thousand a month. So congratulations on, on uh, marrying someone who's going to earn ten grand a month instead of blow ten grand a month. That is probably like a though over your entire forty year marriage, that's a, just a different swing of you know so many millions of dollars you can't even count it. So. Uh, I, uh, it, it's pretty neat. The research when a dentist marries a dentist, their divorce rate's only about nine percent, and that's wow. about. That's, and the only other time you can find a nine percent divorce rate is with arranged marriages uh, in Asia. I'm serious. I mean, because your parents, uh, you know, they don't tell you. You know, an arranged marriage isn't you have to marry Sally Sue. The arranged marriages will set you up with qualified leads, and you'll marry one of those leads. And they have a nine percent divorce rate, whereas a love marriage, where you just go out and heat and you know, marry the hottest girl you can find in a pair of blue jeans. That's about a 50% divorce rate. Uh, yeah. But um, but um, the only um, but when a lawyer marries a lawyer, an MD and MD, a dentist, a dentist, it's about a 9% divorce rate. So uh, you have so much in common. She's also an artist, didn't she? Uh, not not exactly. I mean, not in the sense of she makes art. But I I, 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 I thought on your website, I thought I saw a water watercolor she did or something. No, these are all mine back here. Those are all your – okay, I think – Yeah, those are all my cartoons and things, yeah. Uh, I don't know if it's just a wording or whatever, but I, I kind of got the impression that one of those was your wife's, but that's not right. Oh, not that I know of. Yeah, I'm, I'm pretty something. sure my mom dropped me on my head when I was a newborn baby. <laughs> Sorry, she you're still she doesn't, she doesn't remember, but I, I think the evidence is overwhelming. So, so tell me about your um, – uh, so what do you want to do? You want to start talking about your uh, your books? You want to start us with uh, – uh, let's start with um, – We'll just go in the order of your website, John Cybru, Cerbru, com. So just mm-hmm. think John, then S Y R Sir, and then Boo is in Caribou. John com. Let's start with your first book, Practical Social Media for Dentist. That I'm holding up. If you're watching this on iTunes, you'll have to hallucinate. But if you're on YouTube or Dental Town, there it is. Talk about this book and uh, why did you why did you write a book? Sure. Yep. So the way that I got started in social media, well, just like everyone, I mean, you start with a personal account and everything, but then uh, in dental school, just through all the lectures and all of the, you know, boring part of it, the lecture part, uh, I would just start drawing cartoons of what I was learning about. Okay. And then, so it just started out really dental specific uh, cartoons. And then I uh, eventually published those in the student newsletter, the national student newsletter, when I went to meetings and everything with ASDA. And uh, somebody suggested, you know, you should find a way, a way to just create a gallery almost. And so I just started a, uh, a Facebook page called Dental Art and Humor. And I just thought it would be, you know, some of my friends, dental students that I meet along the way that would might, you know, want to keep up with me and everything. Uh, but what happened was it quickly blew up into dentists around the world sharing all of my all of my work. Uh, to their practice pages when that became um, a, a, a possibility for them to have a business page and they needed content and they naturally turned towards, you know, funny dental comics and so forth. So uh, over the years, I've just kind of kept up with some of them and what they're doing. I've started formulating kind of my own theories about marketing and read other book marketing books and so forth. And uh, I just kind of realized that dentists are either – struggling and not really owning their uh, their social media presence or just hiring it out and paying a, a company hundreds of dollars a month, which may also not be very effective because then they're not as involved and they think they can just pitch it to the to the marketing company and have them interact with their patients. And there's really a, uh, it's a, it's a unique form of marketing where you really have to be present and you really have to participate and engage with your consumers or patients in our case. And I just thought uh, the most commonly asked questions, I've given a couple of talks about social media and everything, and the most commonly asked questions are, what do I post? And how, how do I consistently create good content? What is good content? And so I just really strive to uh, 
covered those in the book in the most direct way possible. Because I think a lot of articles and things out there in, in dental journals or uh, magazines just kind of talk about the fluff and the and the the happiness and social media and how you can do all these different things, but it doesn't really tell you how how to do it. And what I do is I the best chapter in my book by far from what I've heard from reviews is the 50 ideas for your practice where I literally just give you 50 ideas with examples from practices around the country and share their successes and just kind of tell you what's what's popular and what's not. Okay, so, I, so do you want to um, – okay, you can get this book on Amazon.com, and it's also an iBook, right? Yep, yeah, yeah, what, what is What does the iBook mean? It's just a digital book. You know, It's not an audio book. It's a – it's a digital yeah, book. yeah. It's it's just something that you can look at on your uh, on your even smartphone, tablet. Uh, you can even put it on your. Uh, so so Mac. you got to you got to give them uh, you got to give them some of those fifty ideas though. You got to give them some teasers. Oh, absolutely. On the podcast, so. Well, I've got a book right here. I can just start reading it off to you. Yeah, start read the damn book. <laughs> then they won't have to buy it on iTunes. <laughs> then you won't make any money on Amazon. Well, how about here? Here's uh, one of the, one of the things right before that is kind of characteristics of quality content, and I can certainly talk about that and things that you should be looking for when you're thinking of creating content. Because this is really for the for the do-it-yourself dentist, especially if you're not going to pay someone to help you uh, co-manage your social media account, then you really got to step it up to the plate and and participate in it and have everyone in the practice participate with you, kind of create that culture so that it kind can kind of start running itself almost. Well, you know. When I saw your book, you know, the first thing I thought is, um, you know, we've, you know, I've, I've had my office for 20 years, and we, what, what we do, what we've been doing for for 20 years is, when there's a good book, when someone's read a good book, we'll buy, you know, a, a copy for everyone, and then we'll give, we'll give everybody, you know, a month or two to read it, and then we'll have a meeting on it. And what I don't understand about dentists that don't want to do social media, because, because when you when you look at the, the um, it's it's easy to tell that you're a boy. Dennis and your wife's a girl dentist. I mean, you know, to tell the difference between a boy and a girl, you just got to be a Neanderthal, Cro Magnum. It takes a little more sophistication to see that maybe you're from Moldova, I'm I'm Irish or Mex Mexican or Asian, and that's not really that big of a deal. But the hardest thing to see is that you have four different people thinking. You know, the the seniors think differently than the baby boomers versus the generation Xers, the millennials. So I think a lot of people that are your age, at 28, get this social media, but a lot of the older baby boomers and some of the generate the uh, the uh, the seniors uh, uh, that are 55, 60, 65, 70, they they don't really get it. But when I go in their offices, you know they don't get Facebook, but their damn assistants checks their Facebook 25 times a day. And if the whole office would read that, and then he would outsource that to someone who's in the practice, it'd be a lot easier to get. Pictures of patients, pictures of the dentist. You know what I mean? It'd be a lot easy, easier to generate content than is if you outsourced it for, for five hundred dollars a month to someone a thousand miles away from your office. I mean, wouldn't you want to out? Wouldn't you rather out, outsource it to an assistant who already has the natural behavior to get on fa check Facebook in her bed before she gets out and she checks her Facebook in her bed before she goes to sleep than to send it, you know, clear across the country? That's definitely one way to do it. Yeah, um, you'd want to establish some some basic policies and make sure that, you know, she's conveying the, the principles of the practice, the values of the practice. But your you know, book uh, would do that for? Well, <laughs> or did you yeah, I, I would ask. Oh, absolutely. No, it, it, that's what I'm saying. With someone with no uh, real knowledge of, of a, a business page on Facebook, I would definitely recommend starting with my book just because it'll, it'll give you a good comprehensive overview and also specific examples of it. So, and that's the thing. I'm not really a consultant or anything. I don't, I'm, I am a, a wet finger dentist. I mean, I, I practice four days a week. I don't have the time to visit with your practices and everything. And I'm not with a certain company. I just wanted to do this because I guess I like educating people with any, you know, sharing knowledge that I know. So yeah, I'm, I'm not really here to sell any type of product. I know, I know that you have a lot of guests that, you know, you have some type of sub subscription or some type of end goal. But for me, it's just, I've got this information. I want to share it with the world. So awesome. We'll start sharing. Take it away. <laughs> All right. So I can just give you kind of uh, get you in the right mindset for creating content on, on Facebook. So this is just kind of a, an excerpt from my book, I guess. Uh, first, first characteristic is to have a visual with every single post. Okay. Uh, you shouldn't really 
have very many text-only posts because everyone's scroll, scroll, you, you got to think about how people are viewing this content. The majority of them are just scrolling a mile a minute through their cell phones, right? And then it's just in the news feed, whether you're on Instagram, Facebook, or, or Twitter, you're just scrolling a mile a minute, okay? So if you just look at anywhere on your news feed, what's going to catch your eye? It's going to be that picture or a video, okay? And then when you look at the type of content you have, what do you notice first is you notice faces. You notice anything familiar with you. So you, if you've got a group of people in a picture and, and then you've got, you know, a picture of a tooth or a little cartoon, you're going to look at the people and see who you recognize and so forth. So absolutely a visual with every single one of your posts. Uh, that being said, if you do have a caption, and you should, keep it concise. I mean, Facebook or really social media is all about quick tidbits that are, that are easily uh, digested, okay? Easy to interpret. You, you look at it, you get exactly what's going on. Facebook is not a place where you write paragraph form. If you have some topic that you're really passionate about, do that in your blog, okay? And even keep that concise. Nobody's going to read a whole research article. They're going to want a paragraph or two, a few pictures to look at, quick and easy. No one's got the time really as a, as a standard patient to read about all the nuances of gingivitis. Okay, third uh, characteristic, okay, uh, and this comes from one of my favorite uh, social marketers, Gary Vaynerchuk, uh, in a book he wrote called Jab, 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 Right Hook, and basically that's uh, the way to sell the concept of give, 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 ask. Okay, I see way too many dentists out there uh, only asking and asking and advertising on social media, and that's really not what it's about because social media is such a transparent platform. Whenever you say call our office or schedule an appointment or come in and see us, I mean, no one's going to interact with that. No one's going to like an advertisement. Um, so really you should always just be giving authentic tidbits of information or sharing fun photos from everything that you've You've done that day or a special case or a special patient came in, someone came in for a cleaning and it was their birthday. So you got a picture with them and you had a little birthday present for them just in case people come in on their birthday, something fun, okay? So it should just be an authentic interaction. There shouldn't be really be a sales piece to it because that's really not what's popular and what works on social media. No one's gonna interact with an advertisement, okay? So you gotta give, give, give. And then once you are ready to if you're running a special special promotion, or if you are ready to uh, to try and uh, do the the call to action, more people will be more receptive to it because you've given them so so much they almost feel bad not uh, <coughs> not committing to your call to action. So that's the give 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 ask concept. Uh, another one is just to blend in, and it kind of these are all almost tied together. Blending in is just saying you have to kind of look, smell, feel exactly like the content people are already signing on to these social media sites to, to look for. So they're looking for updates from friends, updates from family. They're looking at uh, celebrities or businesses that they've chosen to follow. So they're just looking for that type of information. They're not really looking to call your office for an appointment when they're sitting in the, in the line at the, at the cafeteria waiting to get their food. They're just scrolling to have fun. So put out this information and blend in with the content they're already looking for rather than disrupting it or disturbing it with your little sales pitch. Okay. So just really try to stay away from, unless you make an advertisement, really make your day to day posts, just authentic, authentic interactions and uh, kind of displaying and shouting out what your message is and what your story is. I say you try to think of your Facebook page, almost like a diary or a, a collection of works from your, day-to-day -day practice that in 50 years you're going to be able to look back on, look at all these fun pictures, look at all this great content that we've put out. So really just blend in with, with everything that's, that's already on Facebook that people are looking for. You, you just said something profound because I remember when I was a little kid and, you know, mom would always take me and my five sisters to uh, the cemeteries and you'd see where your grandma and grandpa's was and all, all you'd have is two dates with a dash. <laughs> and that dash is our whole life. And now, now I read that uh, Facebook has over 50 million dead people uh, of their billion, 300 million pages, over 50, 50 million of them already dead. That's going to be the ultimate cemetery plot because if your great-great-grandchildren want to know who Grandpa John Sirbu was, then go to your Facebook page and scroll through your life. I mean, Wouldn't that be, that'd be great if there was just an iPad on every tombstone and then you can just revisit there? Yeah. 
I mean, I think, I'm think so. I, but, but it's true, though. I, I think the ultimate cemetery plot is going to be your uh, your social media page and your 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 great 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 grandkids will really know you. I mean, com- compared to me, when I was looking at my great grandfather, and it was just a tombstone with two dates and a dash, and then yeah. and then our grandkids will get a scroll back if they're ever bored and sit there and really get to know their grandpa. That's that's a cool way to do it. Yeah, yeah. never thought of it like that. Yeah. <laughs> so moving on here, uh, another characteristic is to really harness emotion, and this brings up one of my favorite quotes when in terms of marketing is that logic makes people think, but emotions make people act. Okay, so you can you can put out an informational piece and and say that you know bad brushing and flossing causing causes gingivitis, and that's just something that'll make them think, but it really won't make them act. It won't really won't uh, make them engage with the content in any way. So really try to harness some emotions in your posts, whether it be something funny or something uh, something that makes you feel good or uh, you know even something sad that happened in your community. You can just join the conversation about that, and it's just an emotional piece. So people are much more inclined to interact and engage with something that elicits some type of emotion rather than just you know boring information. So that's another one. Uh, another, another one is which pop culture. So if something's going on right now, if an athlete knocks out a tooth, go ahead and join that conversation, post about it, share the article, give your tidbits about it, because everyone looks to you as the expert on teeth. So if something happens in the news, uh, I've got an example here in, in my book when Michael Buble was at a concert, swung his mic and chipped a tooth, and then he's, he even posted a selfie of himself at the dentist's office with the with the nitrous on there. So, I mean, just stuff like that gets a lot of shares and a lot of likes because people are familiar with it, and so they can interact, interact with it. Um, so you really got to leverage pop culture and leverage good timing, too. So talk about it as soon as you, you see it, not five days later after you've thought of some grand uh, grand statement on it okay and then just the other ones are just kind of be consistent uh, be consistent in your message so you do want to establish that that culture and the values of the practice with anyone that's going to be active uh, actively posting to your Facebook page so that the message isn't lost because when consistency isn't there you kind of you kind of get shaky on your message uh, can, I, can I want to ask you a question that's relevant now on um, uh, America you know a lot of people, the people think the biggest sport in America is the Super Bowl, and they say the NFL is the biggest, and college football is number two, NASCAR is number three, and those are the only three sports that are gaining in money and revenue markets. Everything else is contracting. But I think the biggest sport in America, without a doubt, is is the uh, the election every four years. I think that is the craziest ever. Because because think of the last election. Uh, you know, the White House spent like a billion. The I mean, I, I think the whole election, I think it was like three or four billion dollars spent, and after the last election. No, the, the, the White House didn't change, the Congress didn't change, and the Senate didn't change. So all that frickin' noise and all that money and all that chaos and nothing even changed. And a lot of these dentist Facebook pages, uh, there, there's a lot of politics on there. What, what, what do you think of a dentist posting their thoughts on um, the, the president or Trump or Hillary or the, or the NRA or um, – Obamacare, you know, what, what, what do you what do you what do you think of the business implications when when someone's looking at their local dentist Facebook page and they're seeing a lot of stuff about politics? Uh, extremely risky from my my viewpoint. Uh, exactly. exactly. There, I mean, there's there's certainly things that you should be and shouldn't be posting about. Um, I took a lighthearted approach. I think I think you shared some of these with, where I've made some memes with uh, you know the candidates flossing and everything. Like I, that. Did. I did. I mean. Something like that, sure, you know, where you're not really taking a strong stance on it, but uh, especially uh, in the age that we live in, people are very vocal and people have strong opinions about things, and they're not afraid at all to to take the to the internet to to, look, to let you know what they think. I mean, look look at uh, Walter Palmer with uh, Cecil the Lion. I mean, his reputation was just immediately overnight, uh, you know, uh, almost destroyed. By, by people that have strong feelings one way or the other, and, and this Yelp page was inundated with thousands and thousands of posts. The reason, reason I reposted yours, the, uh, you, you had posted those in um, Dentally Incorrect on Dentaltown. Yeah, I What I liked about yours is you were equal opportunity. I mean, your, your exact post, you couldn't tell who your candidate was because you made fun of all the front runners. 
and mm-hmm. they and they were, they were you're, you're just making a joke. So, but but when you posted that, I you know it wasn't like I could sit there and say, oh, oh he's for Obamacare, he's against it, or he's he's right wing, left wing, what whatever. It, it was just it was it was just funny. It was like pop culture, and I'm going to make it funny, and I'm an equal opportunity humorist. You know what yeah, I mean? There's, there's as, as the right way and a wrong way to do it. As opposed to so many dentists on Facebook, you absolutely know that they're just like militantly for or against gun control or for or against Obamacare and, and all that. And it just seems like so divisive. And it's like, why would you want to go into a town and tell people you're pro-life or pro-choice or pro-Republican or pro-Democrat or pro, you know, why, why would you want to go in there and divide your town when you should be uniting them, them and let's celebrate oral health? I mean, it's like Nike. Nike took a, a 15,000-year-old commodity shoe and turned it into a feeling, Let, let's celebrate athleticism, let's celebrate health, let's celebrate athletes, and let, let's, let's, let's combine this shoe with the greatest athletes and just celebrate putting on a shoe and getting healthy. And I, I think that Dennis Page should be uniting everybody to say, let's just celebrate keeping your teeth and, and, and getting, rid, getting rid of gum disease and cavities and making your teeth whiter, brighter, sexier, and just love your smile. You know what I mean? Not, not, Absolutely. Sit, not sit there and rant on gun control. <laughs> every third post absolutely yeah keep it positive keep it uplifting um even even with the election just celebrate and encourage people to go out and vote no matter who they're voting for just get involved in the process and be thankful that you you live in a society that allows you to do that and everything i mean there's there's ways to to turn anything into a, a, a good positive post so good speaking of cel- karma. That, that, that's, yeah. that's a good deal just, just good vibrations just, good vibrations yeah, that's yeah, the Marky Mark song, wasn't it? Good vibrations. I think, I think so. That was his one-hit wonder song before he went to Hollywood. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And speaking of celebrations, Happy International Women's Day. We, you should have been interviewing a woman here uh, today. Or should I go get my wig downstairs? No, we should just we should just both tell everyone that we're pre-transgender, we're pre-surgical, we're really women on the inside, just dying to get out. But you know, our operation, our our Obamacare, I can't get in for surgery for another another six weeks, so. <laughs> it's really two women today. Yeah, isn't that funny? They got a day for everything. And I just think they should have one day a year that is International Everything Day. Just get it all out. Beef jerky, women, dentists, you know, just every every day, damn thing in one day. Well, International Everything Day. So what what other um so what other tips would you give on there? Well well tell tell me this. I, I want you to you to do something different. Um I don't want you talking to the choir. I mean a, a bunch of dental students and, and people under thirty five are listening to this, they they all get it. Start talking to the um, the 50, like, okay, so I lived in a house with five guys in dental school. These guys, I mean, I don't want to say their names because I don't want Craig Steichen and George Rui to find out I'm talking about them on deal, but these guys have never got on the internet ever. I mean, if they, if they want to buy a book on Amazon, they just go, Craig will just go tell his receptionist Anna to buy him the book. If he goes to a town meeting, he just walks up, you know, dentists are one of the last professions, dentists and lawyers, where they all have a secretary. Um, they're a front desk, and that, which acts as a secretary, whereas most of the world got rid of their secretaries. And so a lot of these guys, they, they, don't, don't, they don't have any need for any of this stuff. So talk to the older guys for a minute that don't get social media, and then also address them. They, um, on your book, you got Facebook, Twitter, Google+, LinkedIn, Instagram, Pinterest. I don't even know what the last are. What, what, are, these, what are these two? On the oh, Amazon. Snapchat and Vine? Yeah, I didn't see. I didn't know what those are. Um, you know, so if you're, if you're, why should they do it? Let, let's go back to why. Before telling them the directions, how to go from Phoenix to LA, tell them why they want to go to LA. And do they have to do every damn one? If you were only going to do three, what three we would you do in order of uh, most return on your time and money uh, to lease, and and why? Sure. So as far as as far as why, I mean. Think of it this way: when when a patient wants to find out about, let's talk let's talk about the the uh, hypothetical medical new patient that's looking for a new dentist. Maybe they just moved in, and they're kind of getting everything squared away, settled in, and they're kind of looking for a new dentist. Um, what are they going to do? I mean, they might get a few flyers in the mail, and they might just Google dentist my town, okay? And then they're going to look at a few of them. They're going to look at a a good three or four, because anytime you make a decision, you want to have something to compare it to, and you're going to look at a few of them, okay? And then every dentist's website, well, not everyone, but a lot of people have pretty decent websites now. I mean, they'll have they'll have a homepage and about page, their services, 
a few testimonials, and as long as you've kind of got the basics there, there, you look just like any other dentist, okay? And then how are you going to find out more information about it? I mean, the path pathway from a patient to their dentist is really complex today. You're going to go online, Google their website, check out their website. You might check out their reviews. You might want to look at what kind of person they are, what kind of, uh, what kind of practice do they run. And then so social media is really a great way to have someone instantly become familiar with the general feel and environment of your practice because they're going to see pictures of you with patients. They're going to see pictures of the, your staff enjoying themselves day to day, having cookies in the break room, celebrating someone's birthday, doing all these fun, uh, interesting things. And they're, they're, all that it takes is just to scroll through your timeline a little bit and instantly kind of get a feel for who you are and what you do. How are you going to communicate that in any other way on a consistent basis like that, except with social media? Can you think of any other form that would really be as authentic as that? I mean, you can do billboards, you can do TV commercials. There's all kinds of advertisements there. But when you really want to get to know someone, I mean, even when I meet someone new for the first time, I'll Facebook them and just kind of scroll through the timeline to get a quick synopsis of, of what they've been up to lately and what, what kinds of things they're into. And you know, I mean, what, you know, another really important thing about this social media is, um, I don't know um, if your mom's brother can advertise in Moldova, but a lot of those countries like uh, Hong Kong and Singapore, they ban advertisement. A lot of, uh, I think, uh, um, I think Romania, m many of those countries, uh, they, they ban direct mail, billboards, TV. They, they ban all that stuff, but those laws are so old on the books that there wasn't social media when all those laws were written. So a lot of this social media has gone into hyper gear in all these countries that have banned advertising um, because, you know, the lawyers aren't can't throw you under the rug for Facebook because, like I say, when those, when those laws were written, there, there was no social media. So the, the, your, your book will actually be far more valuable in Hong Kong and Singapore than it will be in, in America where, you know, you can do any form of advertising. I need to have it translated then. <laughs> yeah, but but go back, but go back to all these deals. I mean, um, all these social medias. Would you recommend, recommend really that somebody should do them all? I mean, I I never even seen the last two. What'd you say these last two were? Vibe and even what? Snapchat and Vine. Snapchat and Vine. So I mean, you recommend <laughs> all of these, or what? What's what's the? Uh, what, I'll tell you what. I mean, obviously, go the from big... most to least important on these. Sure. Uh, the, I mean, the elephant in the room is Facebook. It's it's by far the biggest, and it's I'd say it's the most versatile. Absolutely, as far as uh, gaining gaining traction, attracting patients, building a following, and so forth. Uh, just because Facebook does, you know, if you like a post, post your friend might see it too. That you know, that's that's what you did and everything. So it's a lot easier to get found and so forth. Um, and the the quickest growing demographic on Facebook is these older people because everyone more young is already on it and already moved on to other uh, social media platforms, but they still kind of keep it as their base. I mean, Facebook is just something that's uh, very well established. Next in line, as far as the tiers go, I'd say are Twitter and Instagram. Um, I mean, Twitter, I don't personally use Twitter on a personal level very, very consistently, but I'm very into Instagram and that's obviously a picture and video platform. Uh, short videos and everything. Instagram is a little more limited because you don't have that uh, that kind of algorithm where Facebook uses to to decide what's on your newsfeed. Every right now, it's a free for all. I mean, everything that every person that you like, if they posted, you're seeing it in your timeline. Okay, and then the only really way to discover it is to either advertise on Instagram or get found through hashtags and so forth. What I found that a lot of dentists are really gaining traction with on Instagram is just the dentists that take a ton of pictures of their dentistry and they've got a huge following of dental students around the world. I know dentists that have followings of tens of or even hundreds, hundreds of thousands on Instagram and their practice page isn't necessarily gaining any traction from it but they're just extremely popular and I like to follow them too just because I'm interested in dentistry. So I, I found that Instagram, uh, you can really get a, a good following of other dentists and like-minded people, but it's going to be a little harder uh, to really gain. Uh, the, now, now, Instagram is something you can only do on your smartphone. It's not, you can't do it on your PC, right? Yep, it's strictly a mobile platform. That's just, isn't that yeah. just kind of weird? I mean, isn't that the only one that's like, like that? Why, why well, would they just knock off the whole desktop? 
Snapchat is also like that. Well, because I, that's that's kind of the trend, and it just really wouldn't work as well on a desktop. I think of Pinterest as the desktop version of Instagram, uh, and the reason Pinterest works like that is because when you, when you think of the concept of Pinterest, it's almost like a board when you when you've got pictures all over it, and that that really works well in a wide view platform of a desktop, and you could see everything like that. Instagram is just kind of a linear. Uh, and you think Instagram is bigger than Pinterest? Overall, yeah. I mean, even just the user base, absolutely. Yeah, um, and that's that's owned by Facebook, right? Yep, yep. Uh, Facebook owns Instagram, and I believe Twitter owns Vine, but I'd have to check my facts on that. And I, I, uh, noticed, on, I noticed on your book, your Practical Social Media for Dentists by John Serbu, um, your first review is by the man himself, Ed Zuckerberg. The dentist father of Mark Zuckerberg wrote you an amazing review. Then Jack Hadley, who's a partner in my social practice. Um, then Chris Salerno, chief editor of Dental Economics. And my buddy, Anne Marie. Um, I can never say her last name. <laughs> Gorsica. Gorsica. <laughs> Anne Marie Gorsica. Um, author of It All Starts with Marketing and Beyond wrote you a great review. Then Alec Witter, CEO of Higher Learning Technologies. Who, what's, what's Higher Learning Technologies? Actually, I, I went to dental school with him. He was in my dental class. A uh, very interesting story. He's a dentist? Uh, uh, he actually didn't graduate because his company blew up. <laughs> and really? He, uh, yeah. Yeah, that'd be a really good one for your next podcast, actually. Well, will, you, will you fix it with him? Absolutely, yep. Well, I haven't yeah. heard of a dental student who drops out and starts a company. Is he making more money than dentist? He's made, he He's already worth more than anyone in our class. <laughs> that is yeah, no, awesome. Yeah, no, he... Uh, what he did was he, you know, the dental, the the dental Dex platform, you know, the, all those little flashcards. Yeah. Uh, to study for boards. Right. Well, he wanted to do away with that, and he wanted to uh, put those all on an app uh, on a smartphone. And so he contacted these companies asking them to do it, and nobody would do it. They decided ah, that's a waste of time. So he ended up making an app uh, for dental boards, and he's since moved on into nursing, uh, medical, pharmacy, and he, they're just basically a, a, a boards review uh, app system right now, and, and they're just killing it. That is just awesome. Yeah, you'll, you'll fix me up with him? Sure. That is just, that is hilarious. And then and then the last review was um, um, Kara Bar Babrowski, founder <laughs> of Dental Hygiene with Kara RDH. Yeah, so Kara, I just know through Facebook. She's got a, a popular uh, Facebook page for hygienists, and we kind of go back and forth and, and write to each other once in a while and share each other's content. So she's she's just a, a really good resource for, for hygienists. Right on. So uh, so then what do you, do you want to still talk about practical social media, or do you want to go to your next book? Or, I'll talk about anything. Well, what, what, do you, what do you think would be best? Um. I mean, we can we can go all over the place. We can sure we can mention some of my other projects. Yeah, let's uh, let's go. Let's just go down the deal. Let's go with dental art and humor. Dental art and humor is intended for dentists, dental personnel, and anyone who has a profound interest in both dentistry and creative humor. Is this more? We'll talk talk about that. What made you write that write that book? Well, so that that's that's how I got started in uh, with with my page, dental art and humor, and it's it, it just kind of grew from there. Uh, it started out just, just, I really like drawing and drawing cartoons, and I, I really like kind of making witty comments and things like that. And this is started out strictly as a page for other dentists, just because it's it, it was so specific. But I've since kind of started creating content that uh, patients might enjoy too, so that you don't have to understand as much uh, of dental terminology and things like that to get the jokes. So Dental Art and Humor, really, it's it's not so much a book as much as just a collection of, I can't remember, 50 or 60 uh, dental cartoons on one page, and then on the other page, it just explains any terminology that, that it uses. So it's just it's just a really fun kind of novelty book. You can just put it out in your waiting room, and then patients can kind of look through it and, and have a chuckle with you. Yeah. But, uh, but yeah, a lot of people, a lot of dentists will share... Um, a lot of my comics just on their uh, Facebook page that, that patients can understand, like the, like all the uh, deciduous teeth having a dance, and then you've got an old molar saying no grinding. I mean, my my content has been shared so and stolen so you're, many you're times. You're the one who wrote that. Yeah. yeah no, there's you you you, prob- you wrote the, uh, the 
the joke, uh, the older molar telling the young deciduous seed no grinding? Absolutely, and the one with that was the uh, joke. The one with the tooth looking at orange juice that says no pulp. That's yours too. Oh, those oh. are classics. Howard, on your personal uh, Facebook page, you used one of my uh, creations as your profile picture when uh, the two incisors like this as equality. Oh, or is that that was yours? Yeah. Oh man, that that was so romantic to me because uh, my uh, my little brother's gay. Yeah. And we grew up in Kansas, which is the only state that uh, uh not allowed to teach evolution and they teach creationism and I mean they they just tortured him back there. Yeah, I mean they just tortured him and when that uh so, what, did you write that when the Supreme Court ruled in on that? Yeah, yeah, it was just my my take. That was and actually I got flack for that for being too political because someone called me out and said this is a page about dental art and humor. We don't need politics in here. And I'm like, come on. Well, gay people have so, teeth too, don't they? Yeah. Don't get, don't get don't gay people need to see a dentist too? Absolutely. Uh, yeah, so. that's uh yeah, that was man, what a rough childhood. My two oldest sisters were Catholic nuns and my little brother's Liberace. I mean I mean uh I would <laughs> like to sit around that Thanksgiving dinner. I mean that just oh my god, that just that is just a hard hard to reconcile family family dinner when you got two Catholic nuns and a gay brother. Fun, fun know. times. So let, let's switch gears to this, um, the complete pre-dental guide to modern dentistry, um, an innovative and visual approach to understanding basic dental concepts and procedures. So is that for consumers or for dental students? That is for high school and college students uh, and even maybe first year dental students uh, considering a career in dentistry. And I wrote that while in dental school, at least the first edition I wrote while in dental school, uh, because I was just blown away by how little I knew of the actual career of dentistry uh, when I got into it. I mean, I couldn't tell you what a crown was. And so if you, if you don't have, if your dad isn't a dentist, you might think that dentistry is great because you make a lot of money and you don't, you don't have to work Fridays, you know? I mean, that's how naive it can be. And uh, all the other literature out there, I realize, is just how to take the DAT, how to do well on your interviews and how to get into dental school, but nothing telling you, hey, day to day, what are you gonna be doing for the rest of your life? And so uh, I, I basically just started writing, and it turned into a book, and I authored and illustrated it. And that's my most successful book by far, and I don't do any advertising or marketing for it, just because I know that's what uh, that audience is looking for. And, and it's going to be pre-dental people buying that book. Yeah, yeah. So, it, I, and it, I mean, I've so people are, have told are, me that. How are they finding it? Are they finding it on the message board, student doctors, or – it might be on there. I don't know. I mean, I, I just put it on Amazon, and that's that's all oh, I did. Oh, Amazon. Okay. Yeah. And that, that's I your mean, number one selling book? Absolutely. Well, you know, yep. what, we, you know what we need to do? Um, you know, you think um, at your age, you think social media is huge. I'm an older guy. I'm, I'm old enough to be your dad. And um, the Dental Town Magazine, believe it or not, it, it's mailed to 125,000 dentists every month. And a lot, a lot of people think newspapers and magazines are going out of business, and it's just simply not true. Uh, wow. People aren't going to pay for a newspaper or a magazine, but if you mail them a free magazine, they're monkeys. They're going to take it to their chair, and they're going to read it, and, and um, that's actually more influential than the Dentaltown website. You know, the Dentaltown website um, really didn't even really start to become any form of influential until about – we started in 98, but it was about 2003 before it even started to get traction. Facebook didn't start till 2004, but now now I would say the, the, the website's about a third – but the magazine still two thirds. I'm sure someday the the website will be all. But you should write a um, a review of your practical social media for dentists, and then and then when you write that up, um, tell them um, you should post your Hall of Fame cartoons. You should start and saying that that equality, that that pulp. I mean, you're the ones that have been shared the most because you know when you share those, you see the name there, but you don't, it doesn't really. Oh yeah, yeah. You don't and read it and register. The, the name's but, really easy to crop out too. <laughs> But the uh, the no pulp, yeah, the no pulp. I mean that that's. I mean you you should you should do that. You'll you'll sell a ton of books if you write a book review in the magazine. And we and and I think the theory of the book should be, you know, to write um, for the older people people too. That you know th this would be a great book for uh, you know the person in your office who's doing your social media. If if the doc's not into it himself, you know what I mean. But this is something the whole office should read because I think if 
the whole office got on board, then they'd all be looking out uh, for that one good picture of the day. You know, it's a cute kid getting their first cleaning or, or somebody, you know. Yeah, it can it can seem like a lot of work unless you have a method to it. And I talk about that a little bit in the, in the book, kind of creating that culture and making sure that everyone's on board to participate and organizing it, creating a social calendar, basically, which is a, a, a literal calendar in the break room somewhere and just kind of mark down. I've got a list of all the holidays. Like, sounds like your next app. Your next book and, should be an app. An important date. The, the, there you go. The dental app calendar. Or you just have that app, then every day it has an idea. Yeah, yeah. And, I mean, even something little – you want to hear a great investment for uh, for a dental office as far as increasing their uh, uh, content on Facebook is buy a selfie stick. As, as stupid as it is, selfie sticks are so much fun. And, and what really gets a lot of engagement is group photos because there's a lot of people in it. Someone's going to know someone. And if you can tag – uh, your assistants, your hygienists, all of their friends are going to see it, and that is going to get a ton of traction. Uh, and it's just kind of a selfie stick lets you be in the photo too because you're the one that's taking it and, and everything. So just buy a selfie stick, put it in the break room at your monthly meetings, take a, take a group photo every single month that you have a meeting, and just uh, carry your selfie sticks to group events if you do a 5K uh, local events, everything. I mean, it's it's just a stupid, cheap little gimmick, but everyone has so much fun with it. That is, that is a great idea. And then I want to talk about your uh, your last uh, book on your website um, of uh, johnserbu.com is um, Tommy the Tooth. And uh, you know, I um, I want to say something, just a little rant here on the uh, um, you know we're, we've always been told that you know the whole world's gone from drinking water to drinking soda. Uh, they show us all these charts about, you know, pounds per sugar per consumed per year and how it's been going up forever, even though it's been uh, leveling off and contracting a little bit, starting about three, I think it plateaued about three years ago and it's coming down now. But when you go around the earth, I mean, I mean, look at me, I, I overeat, I'm fat, but I haven't had a cavity in 28 years. And when I go around to Indonesia and China and Malaysia, they all say that this generation consumes twice as much sugar as the last generation. They have half the cavities because of, they, they only relate it to home care. They don't relate it to diet because, and they also don't relate it to water fluoridation because Singapore has community water fluoridation like Phoenix does, but Japan, Tokyo doesn't have it. But in both places, the decay rates plummeted because of stuff like Tommy the Two, Tommy's new friend, of educating young kids, getting parents involved in teaching kids how to brush and floss their teeth. The decay rate's coming down regardless of water fluoridation or fluoride in the toothpaste or sugar consumption. It's, it really has to do more with behavior, um, not pretty much what you're eating diet, which is so counterintuitive to what we hear from the ADA, the CDC, all, all the published literature. That's just not what the, the dentists are telling you when I go around to 50 different countries and talk to the people in the trenches. So I, I, I always think the um, – I mean, who cares about making grandma a denture? It's all about the kids. I mean, pediatric dentistry is the most important branch of dentistry, not and geriatric dentistry would have to be the least important. So talk about Tommy the Tooth, uh, Tommy's new friends, and do you think that's um, this book is going to actually get little kids to change their behavior and take care of their teeth better and prevent disease? Yeah, so Tommy the Tooth, uh, really for me, I enjoy writing and drawing, and I just, I just wanted to draw and write a little story about it. It's basically about a – tooth that meets a new friend who doesn't want to play with him because he's not brushed. So he's got to go home, ask mom for money, you know, get a toothbrush and so forth. And there's a little brushing calendar at the end that parents can photocopy and everything. Um, you know, I, I don't know. I didn't do the research and, you know, ask myself, is this really effective? Uh, it was just a really fun thing that, that I did. And a lot of just friends and grandmas of friends and everything really had a, a had fun uh, time with it, reading it to their kids. So, you know, feel free to Order one, try it out, write me a review, and tell me how it went. Well, you know, uh, like I said, you you got you got a uh, I, I get a couple feet of stuff uh, every month mailed to me for a little little hundred page magazine. You know, we got to get rid of about three feet of stuff every month. But you got a uh, is that the cat? The cat is knocking over my computer. But anyway, uh, but you you got you got, you got carte blanche. You when you want to write a series of reviews for this stuff or just uh, uh, write it up, send it to uh, the the editor is Tom Giacobi. So just uh, Tom at dentaltown.com, or he might be Tom at, Tom at franmedia.com. I think I think he's both. Both. 
And then you can CC me, uh, Howard at Dentaltown.com. But Tom Jacoby's the editor, but um, he, it's his call, not mine. But I think he'll uh, completely agree that this is just uh, classic stuff. And like I say, I can't, I'm doing this interview with you, and I didn't know you were the one who, who did the no grinding at the deciduous dance. I didn't no know one that. knows. I know. So so let's make them all know. I mean, I mean that. I mean, you're you're like Hall of Fame material. You know another thing. So I uh, I started in as the news, which is a newsletter. If you want to have a comic section in Dentaltown, just a half page or a fourth page, get. I mean, I'm, I don't know if some company will sponsor that or anything, but I've got content for years. So well, no, well, I, I'm, I'm full of it. Well, pitch, pitch that. Well, you shouldn't tell people you're full of it. They might they might take that wrong. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, yeah, yeah. Pitch that. Email that. Let's pitch it to the team because um, th- that's a great thing about uh, Dentaltown. We don't we don't have to be sponsored or anything because we're uh, it's a family owned business and we're rich. We don't have don't have you don't have to do nothing for money. Um, you know, I mean, uh, I mean, I, these podcasts are free. I mean, you know, half, half, almost everything's for free on Dentaltown. But, uh, but yeah, I, I think, uh, like I say, that, that just blew me away. I did not know. Th- those are probably the three most, what, what other most famous ones have you done? The deciduous oh, non-grinding, oops. the quality of the two teeth, the no pulp and the orange juice. There's a ton of them. Uh, I mean, even I do memes sometimes too. You know, the meme with Batman slapping Robin and then right? Robin, that Robin was you? starts saying that uh, Doctor Oz, what said, Dr. Oz says. Yeah, he's not a dentist. That was yeah. you too. Yeah. Oh my God, that is just my God. We need to put a picture of your face in the magazine, and then these are the <laughs> memes that you. I mean, really, these are these are Hall of Famers. Yeah, no, no. I mean, I, I, it's been viewed millions of times, and and uh, I think if you're a dentist and use the internet at all, you've seen some of my work, even though my name. Well, you know, maybe wasn't on it and but, and so forth. But. Because some of these people they crop uh, they crop pictures out. Yeah, yeah, and I just I know that happens. And well, you know what I always do when think? I'm going to share a picture. I don't um I don't when I see a picture I don't save it to the desktop to share it. What I do is I right click it and where it says search for image on Google, and then it'll pull up all the images and then you start with the biggest one because it's the most clarity and that usually has the name the name on it usually. Mm-hmm. You know that that's a, you know I'd rather have a seven hundred I'd rather have a thousand times eight hundred image than a three hundred times two hundred. But so but yeah. what you just said you know so they want they want content on their Facebook page. But what did I just hear you right? So you're saying if you go to facebook.com forward slash John Sirbu J O H N John Sirbu uh, S Y R B U that they can just hit share for, for their dental page right? So they they log on from their Facebook dental page. And then they follow you, and then it shares well, their deal. I mean, is that how so, that works? So John Sirbu is just kind of something that I created uh, now that I have a few more books under my belt and projects, and it's just kind of a hub for everything that I do. Uh, as far as uh, these cartoons and everything, they're all on dental art and humor. I mean, if you just Google dental art and humor, it'll take you right to the to the Facebook page, and, and or it's just facebook.com slash dental art and humor. And that's where oh, all so of these. Oh, so you're saying there's a www.dentalartandhumor? Nope, nope. I it's I don't John have Serbu. a website for that. That's that's strictly yeah. There's a johnserbu.com, and that's that's more just kind of me and what I my projects and everything. But dental art and humor is where all of these original cartoons were uh, posted, and since then, I mean, they've been they've been you know taken all over the board but that uh but that's where every everything was originally posted and that's where you'll find all the 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 content so just check out dental art and humor dot uh if you if you okay i'm, like. still, I'm still not i'm just not funny so it's <laughs> what what's the website dental art and humor or are you saying are you saying just google dental art and humor yeah it's just a facebook page dental art and humor that's that's all it is okay so and it's facebook.com forward but... slash dental art and humor yeah Okay. So facebook.com forward slash dental art and humor. Yep, all one word. And uh, not ampersand, just dental art and then A-N-D humor. Yep, yep. Yeah. Or you could just Google it. Just Google dental art and humor. Dental art and humor right, right there. Yeah. Huh. Well, man, I, I, uh, I knew, I knew, I mean, I really knew you were a stud, but I did not know that the <laughs> most famous deals were all yours. I mean, that that is, seriously, dude, you just really, you, you just made me uh, awestruck. <laughs> no, or no. the the first impression one with the tooth kind of mixing up an alginate and what do you do when I got a date tonight I got to make a good first impression or the Chuck Norris's teeth stronger than titanium burrs and all that yeah 
Damn. Oh, you gotta, I, I, you gotta be proud, man. You, I mean, that is amazing. I just, I just am just full of. This is what I do for fun. I mean, I really hardly make any any money whatsoever on this. It's just what I, what I do, and I, I can't stop. <laughs> so. Well, well, that is the uh, that that's the, the key to a business. You you first find the passion that that something you want to do for free, and then you attach a business model to it. I mean, you know, Twitter, Pinterest, all these big things made zero revenue for years, and then all of a sudden they figured out how to monetize them. So. Keep doing your passion, keep doing the art, keep building the brand name, and then the business model will, will follow. All right. I, I, will I mean, do. It will. No, I mean, that, that's you. all the time. Just, just keep building your brand, keep building your name. I mean, you're, you know, everybody knows your work as Family Guy. They just don't know that you're Seth MacFarlane writing all this stuff. So start <laughs> working on the John Sirbu and uh, start associating that, hey, you're the Seth MacFarlane behind all this Family Guy stuff you see all the time. Just keep building it because you're already doing it for fun. You're already doing it for free. You're, that, that's how you start a business, and then the business model will, will kick in. You'll, you'll find a way to monetize it, and I'll, I'll try to do everything I can to help you on that. Absolutely, yeah. Appreciate you having me on here, and then that way some townies will and, and I, 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 I think the uh, I think having your artwork on Dentaltown every month, I think that I mean, that's a clutch <laughs> idea. I mean, why the hell wouldn't we want to do that? That's just amazing. And uh, like I say, I think you need to write an article – because everybody's seen your work, but I don't think anybody knows that, you know, Seth MacFarlane is uh, John Serbu. So put your big face up there, put all those memes. You're the guy behind all this stuff, and then start touting your own harm. Start, start, start marketing the, the Seth MacFarlane part of the story, and then, right. uh, and then get that brand as big as associated with all these things they see, and then the, the money will follow. Yeah, no, and I, I'd be happy to, and I, I'd feel honored to in Dentaltown because I, I really do – just use dental town and and that's kind of my go-to i really think it's the impact of dental town is is huge in the in the dental industry uh from from so many standpoints i mean even when you say that uh other, other countries use dental town as their textbooks almost uh just just the impact that it has is is incredible and i just have a lot of respect for it and i'm a townie and i i use it every day so you know, you know it was uh you know i just got back from um 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 Japan, Singapore, Malaysia, and um, Indonesia, and it was just amazing how, how about one out of every fifth dentist that come out to me and talk in uh, Indonesia or Malaysia, I mean, they get teary-eyed because they said, dude, we were in dental school and our books were 15 years old, and they were, you know, uh, from China, they're in Mandarin, Mandarin Chinese, we don't even speak Mandarin, and we'd get on Dental Town, and here's just stuff that was done yesterday, and, and they'd get all teary-eyed, and they're just saying, I feel like all the greatest stuff I learned in dental school was on Dental Town uh, while I was in class reading a 15-year-old book. So, the, so I keep telling these dentists, the, these dentists that are, um, I mean, I mean, Dental Town has nothing to do with uh, the website. It's all the people posting amazing freaking cases on endo, perio, pedo, you name it. And and those guys are educating. They're literally educating dentists in 200 countries every single time they're they're posting. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. And you made me think of a good point uh, just with that story is that, you know, if I'm the Seth MacFarlane of John Sirbu or whatnot, and you're the Howard Fran of Dentaltown, I mean, people probably originally knew Dentaltown much more than they knew who Howard Fran was. But it just goes to show you that even on social media, you have about twice as many followers as Dentaltown because people do want to connect with people. They don't like to follow brands nearly as much as they like to follow people. And that's especially important for the dental industry being a service industry where we have such an intimate relationship with our patients and they know our name and they know our faces. They have their favorite hygienist. And that's why social media is so, so important and relevant in uh, a dental office because people are following people. So all social media is, is just people interacting with other people, people like, like, uh, like other people. And that's just human nature. So that's why I think social media is, has so much, so much success and so many people are on it and using it almost like an addiction. I mean, they just use it every single day, uh, just because they, it just, it's their way of interacting with the outside world. It's just an individual space. And you know, all the, all the businesses, you know, they, you know, no matter what business you're in, no matter if you're in Intel, Microsoft, or dental office, everybody's saying you know spend three to five percent of revenue on advertising, and that's the government's problem. They they don't they don't spend money advertising, so people are so anti-government because they they don't associate a face with the CDC or the or any of these departments or NASA's or whatever, and then those agencies don't spend any money on advertising, so they never really have that human relationship. 
You know what I mean? They maybe they maybe need to up their PR a little yeah, bit. Yeah, they, they need they need to put a human face behind all those agencies. I mean, right now Americans pretty much only have a human face with like the White House, and yeah. there's hundreds of agencies that should be building their own identity where you know people would feel like their tax dollars are a lot more effective if they if they heard what they were doing with their money, you know, you know, and, and a face, and and that's also why um, you know these corporate dental change. No one's gonna have a fuzzy feeling uh, and connect to Aspen Dental, uh, they're going to connect to the, the person that treated them at Aspen Dental. And if that kid after two or three years at Aspen goes and sets up his own practice, they're going to follow that kid. Yeah. And especially if you are a private practice dentist and you have any concern for corporations coming into your town and take, taking your patients and, and you know, all, all of that, I mean, then you really have to step up your and solidify and cement the relationship with you and your patients. <laughs> and that and social media is obviously a great uh, way to do that. And if you have any uh, look to the future as far as your practice, I mean, right now, sure, a lot of your practice is the, the money coming in is from the baby boomer generation and so forth. But when it comes time to interacting and, and, and uh, entering a relationship with millennials, I mean, good luck if you're not going to communicate on the way that they communicate, which is online and in social media. I mean, it's just not going to be, you're going to get taken over not only by corporate, corporate dentistry, but by some young shot that knows how to, how to brand himself and how to connect with, with millennials when they, be, they become uh, the big money makers of the practice. But as a baby boomer, ain't it true that millennials are so damn lazy they're not going to come into the dentist anyway? I think so. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> Unless, a, unless their mom scheduled their appointment. That's the funniest thing. You always hear how the old people think millennials are so lazy, but they just—they're not lazy. They just think differently, and they're not gonna—they're not gonna do anything that they don't think is logical. You know, you tell them to do a task, and if they think it's illogical, you know, they—they they appear lazy, but they're just not gonna do it. You know what I mean? They're—they just think differently. But hey, we're out of time. That's our hour. Hey, John, uh, seriously, dude, I—I uh, I knew you were a hot little stud, but I didn't know you were that stud. I mean, you—I—I I, I thought I—I I mean, really, I thought I thought I was. Uh, I thought I was interviewing a, a, an amazing mind on social media. I didn't know that uh, I was interviewing the guy who won the Oscar in it. Uh, that's uh, that's truly amazing. Send an email to Tom G. Kobe. Uh, uh, call him up. Talk to him. Pitch his deal. I, I think the, the comic thing. I think uh, an, art, an article. Uh, I think I, I want to help you spread the word of everything you're doing because I think everything you're doing is just amazing. So thank you for all that you've done for dentistry, buddy. It's been a lot of fun, Howard. Thanks for having me. All right. Have a good day. Bye-bye. All right.